I'm Dave Green. I'm Vice President of Legal for GitHub, and I lead three legal teams. Um, collectively, those teams help our engineers innovate, develop and launch uh, GitHub's products safely and responsibly, uh, manage our privacy expectations, and help uh, ensure that we've secured our customers' most important assets. Um, I've got a short time this morning, and so I want to focus my comments on the importance of developing your company's AI story. There's been so much hype around AI. We've listened to it for the last two or three years. Um, and now that we've got products in the market, there's real scrutiny. You know, folks can see AI's promise, but they want to know how it delivers on that promise and whether it's ready for enterprises to use. So what I would say for all of us, particularly in the financial sector, the road ahead for AI success depends in large part not so much on how we generate the hype around AI, um, but really how we're using our roles to demonstrate that AI is trustworthy, that it's secure, and that it's safe. I'm going to be using GitHub's AI story, um, talking a little bit about the launch of Copilot and how we use that experience not only to perfect our own AI story, but really how we're using that experience to help our customers, particularly those in the financial services sector, uh, write their AI story. So let's, uh, let's start. Let's start with Copilot. We launched Copilot, uh, it's hard to believe, we launched it over three years ago. Uh, it was, to give you some context, that was about a year before the debut of ChatGPT. And when we launched Copilot, we really had three specific aims. We wanted to maximize developer happiness by enabling AI to sort of solve the routine uh, and, and standard parts of coding and al allows developers to focus on the fun, the exciting aspects of coding and the challenging parts. We wanted to increase their productivity by um, putting common functions at a developer's fingertips. And more importantly, we wanted to accelerate software development overall by letting developers remain in the flow of coding you, instead of stopping and starting as they you know, looked at their various tasks. So in less than three years, Copilot has become the most widely adopted AI developer-powered platform. Excited about it, thank you. Um, how did that happen? And that's what I want to talk to you is that journey and what we've learned from that journey. Our engineers, if, you, if they were on stage, they would probably point to GitHub's very real impact um, to developers. And the study uh, with Accenture, I think, is a perfect example that sort of demonstrates, you know, the hype is real. Um, AI-powered coding solutions more generally bring unprecedented and immediate impact to a developer's workflow. As we rolled out versions of Copilot uh, for business, and then more recently Copilot for enterprises, the performance told a similar stor story of productivity and benefits for a business. And it's not really complicated for enterprises to look at these numbers and understand the promise of AI. You've got you know, developers who are completing tasks faster. They're able to adapt to new coding challenges and situations a, a lot easier, and they're happy and happy developers tend to stay engaged with their teams and they, they tend to stay with their companies. But I would say that GitHub's success uh, is more than just about the hype. <clears throat> because I think as Satya Nadella once said, our industry doesn't respect tradition, three years with tradition, our industry respects innovation. And if you look at what's happening in the AI space, innovation is happening at a breathtaking pace. Seems like every couple of months we've got new models that are coming out with improved functionality and speed. There's certainly many more choices than when GitHub Copilot launched, and they include open source, mixed source, uh, custom models, all of which give customers significantly more choices about how they're going to deploy AI. So when you think about winning the hearts and minds of your customers, as we've thought about winning the hearts and minds of our customers, um, there's probably several factors at play. I think for developers, the key factor is the ease of integration of AI into all of their everyday workflows. Um, it democratizes AI access because it meets developers where they are in their process. It, uh, it gets them familiar with the languages that they're familiar with already. And it infuses it in the entire software development cycle <clears throat> I, 
think overall AI is doing something more powerful though. It's lowering the barrier for entry for becoming an AI developer. And that's exciting, I think, for enterprises in particular because it's allowing enterprises to lock this great history that they developed uh, in their own code and being able to unlock that code and unleash that for their own developers. As an in-house business lawyer, I think there's other factors at play other than just the performance and the promise of AI. I think it's about demonstrating real value by speaking directly to the concerns of the many stakeholders within an enterprise in detail. For highly regulated um, enterprises like financial sector, AI can present some really complex challenges. Customers are making pretty big bets about the future of software development. They have uncertainty, particularly given the pace of AI technology, but more, more critically, given the pace of AI regulation. <clears throat> Pardon me, a little out of order here. There we go. So what I would say is our, our enterprise customers have a diverse set of stakeholders. They've got their leadership their in-house counsel, their business partners, their regulators, their auditors, and most importantly, their customers. And each of these stakeholders benefits from a clear AI story that addresses their hard questions and concerns. They're looking for transparency, they're looking for trust, and they're looking for shared collaboration. And I'll talk a little bit about each of those. With transparency, they wanna understand the business and legal is issues that are introduced by specific AI technologies. They want to know how GitHub solutions are addressing those particular issues. I'll give you an example. Your lawyers in, in, inside your companies care deeply about indemnity. And so they'll argue and fight for you know, the largest possible coverage and the, the highest possible amounts. But the CTOs aren't so much concerned about indemnity. They want to know technically how these solutions are going to address real problems. And I'll give you a perfect example. When GitHub first launched, one of the first questions and the first concerns was whether this AI coding solution was a copy and paste machine, whether it just simply regurgitated the code that it was trained on. Um, and so by being able to explore and, and identify specifically the steps that we use to train, in addition to the technologies that we utilize to address those concerns, we were able to not only ensure and uh, benefit the customers that were looking for the indemnity piece of it, we offer an uncapped indemnity. That's uh, you know, unbelievable in our field. But we also demonstrated what our technology did. We have uh, blocking solutions, for example, that very quickly look at the outputs and compare them against all of the billions of files in GitHub's public repos in milliseconds. And if they see a match above a certain characters, they block that code from appearing. But we also recognize that our open source developers um, cared very deeply about seeing that their work was credited and that people had an opportunity to look and explore and learn from open source solutions. So we created a code referencing um, technology that instead of blocking actually highlights that code, provides a link to where that code sits in a public repository and a link to the license so people can investigate some of their compliance opportunities and obligations. With trust, I think customers are looking for evidence that these products have been developed responsibly, and they want to know how we're treating their valuable source code and their data. And then with shared responsibility, our customers in the financial services sector are under a whole bunch of regulations, a myriad of them. We'll talk a little bit about some of them. And they want to know how GitHub can help contribute to those solutions. Um, how can we help them build their AI solutions in light of those stringent requirements? So we took this engagement, we took this feedback, and we turned it into a trust center. And I won't go and walk through all the terms and provisions of our trust center. I invite you, if you have time today, to go to github.com, take a look at our trust center, and see how it addresses specific processes, how it identifies legal concerns and talks about how we address those particular concerns. And I, I mention that because as you're all you know, embarking on your AI journey, you're gonna enc uh, encompass similar concerns and similar challenges, not just from your, your internal regulators, and sorry, your internal stakeholders, but your external stakeholders. And so it's absolutely critical that like GitHub learned and like we experienced, that you perfect and refine your AI story so that you can establish the trust, the transparency, and demonstrate the shared responsibility that you have. We also know that on onboarding any new technologies, like 
particularly in the financial services sector, is a really complicated process. It can take months, maybe even a year, to negotiate customer agreements. And by sharing this information and by showing a lot of that detail of that process, we accelerate that onboarding process. We get people faster into the products and more quickly onto their AI transformation. So I want to talk about some current trends in AI regulation because there's more to be written about your AI story as these regulations come, uh, come down. Um, we've got DORA, we've got the AI Act. You know, it's, it's essential that we unpack as, as providers, as solution providers, that we actually unpack the requirements affiliated with this regulation. We've been talking to regulators, particularly in the open source space. We've been educating them about the various layers in the software stack and in its life cycle. And the good news is I think we're starting to see some of our feedback reflected in this regulation. You're seeing regulation, for example, um, that's actually taking a measured approach. It's looking at specific risks that are in each layer associated with each type of stack. It's looking at different sectors that have higher risk versus medium risk. And I think as providers and solution providers, we owe it to ourselves to identify where we fall in that stack and educate our customers about the things that we're doing to meet our responsibilities and then the things that customers can do to meet their responsibilities. It's a shared collaboration and partnership. So as soon as we can unpack and, and identify those, we can begin telling our AI story internally. We can also begin telling our AI story externally. And with that, uh, I thank you for your time and I wish you good luck and I certainly welcome you to discuss with GitHub our experience so that we can help you on your AI journey as well. Thank you.